Good morning, wealth creation investors and traders. Matthew Buckley, the chief investment strategist here at WCI, and going to be a shortened week this week with Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. But just because it's a shortened week doesn't mean we're not going to see significant moves in the market. Let's not get a quick debrief of last week. First of all, unless you've been living in a cave, you know that Israel's under attack. And obviously, what's the difference? between last week and every other week. Nothing, except that uh, Hamas, uh, Syria, and and by proxy, Iran, are just ramping up efforts to um, kill Israelis and wipe Israel off the uh, face of the earth. So, Israel obviously doesn't take uh, things lying down. Uh, It's like the state of New Jersey uh, wanting to be killed by 49 other states. And being from New Jersey, I know what that feels like. Um, but uh, they're they're defending themselves, right? Uh, and of course, the world condemns Israel more than they do <clears throat> the people that try and kill them on a daily basis. But I digress. So, not good news out of uh, Israel at all. And here's the here's what's different about all the times in the past uh, with uh, people wanting to kill Israelis. At least Mubarak over in uh, Egypt was somewhat of a centrist. We knew what we had, and and the guy wasn't that dumb. Now we have the Muslim Brotherhood in charge of Egypt. We have uh, clown cars now running countries all around Egypt that used to be, how should I say, uh, kind of normal. Um, But now all bets are off, right? Egypt's pulled uh, their ambassador from Israel, uh, and and it's going to get a lot uglier before it gets better, folks. So uh, not good news out of uh, of, uh, Israel. Last week, also, the president met with, uh, you know, CEOs, yawn, and uh, met with uh, congressional leaders. It just cracks me up, folks. Uh, We couldn't have done this six months ago, a year ago, uh, two months ago. Of course, we couldn't. Everything has to be a crisis in this country instead of making important leadership decisions now. So they got together. And of course, the president is asking for one point six trillion in new taxes, as opposed to the eight hundred billion that he asked Boehner for earlier. So the guy clearly said he won. He's got a mandate and he's just going to crush everybody uh, in his path. So that that, that should turn out well for us. Uh, Here's what Ben Bernanke uh, had to say last week, uh, our brain trust that runs the Fed. You ready? Quote, overly tight lending standards may be preventing creditworthy borrowers from buying homes, which is impending the economic recovery. Uh, Duh. Seriously? Uh, Sir, it is time for you to go back to Princeton. Uh, Banks are sitting on tons of money and they're not lending. Mainly because the Fed, you pay them an interest rate to sit on gobs of cash. And I've called for this before. You're done with your bullets, right? QE3, Infinity, all this quantitative easing, Operation Twist, buying all these mortgage-backed securities. Doesn't work. The effect of each round of quantitative easing has had a a diminishing return each time. The last bullet you have in your gun to get lending going is actually reduce the interest rate that you give to banks or actually start paying them a little bit of money instead of printing dollars, folks, and and providing liquidity to banks who don't need it. Why don't you provide liquidity to mom and pop? Um, also, last week, uh, the Congress got together and here's here's breaking news, blamed John Corzine, former senator from New Jersey, former Democratic governor of uh, New Jersey, and also the head of Goldman Sachs for the collapse of MF Global. They stop short, of course, because nobody has the guts to really call a spade a spade is uh, the guy's a criminal and should be in jail. But he's not. Uh, he's a huge Obama supporter, big Democrat. Uh, and if you think uh, Eric Holder, our attorney general, is going to go after this guy, uh, you're nuts. But uh, uh, a House report said John Corzine was responsible for the collapse of MF Global and uh, hundreds or tens of thousands of uh, retail traders, farmers who used to hedge through MF Global of losing their money. Now, here's what's here's what's great. John Corzine's like, well, it looks like everybody's going to get their money back. Oh, that's that's nice. That's great. Two, three, four years later, they're going to get their money back with interest. Right, John? You know, you're going to pay them interest on that. Um, And also, obviously, last week, just an absolute embarrassment that the media fails to uh, cover is what happened in Benghazi. General Petraeus, who was clipped, everybody knew about his affair eight months ago. Here's what happened, folks. He went to Benghazi in September, put his own eyes on the ground, walked around, talked to everybody, did his own investigation. And he had a whole set of stuff that he was going to load on, uh, unload on and testify. 
The guy gets clipped three days after the election. He's asked to resign by the uh, DNI, uh, the director of national intelligence. A little weird. A little weird, folks. Uh, and he testified under oath that uh, somebody in the administration changed his talking points about what he was going to say in front of Congress. Nobody knows. White House doesn't know who changed his talking points. So it's pretty incredible. I saw a, a great post on Facebook over the weekend that um, you go after Ambassador Rice, you got to come to me. That's what he said in the press conference, right? Really tough, tough guy, President Obama. He's like, you got a problem with Ambassador Rice, one of my ambassadors. You got to come through me. Really? I really wish uh, you had done that for our ambassador in Libya as he, he was being smothered and sodomized. Um, but hell, you go after Ambassador Rice, man, you got to you, you, you better pack a lunch, right? Cover the Wall Street Journal today, folks. Investment falls off a cliff. Investment falls off a cliff. U.S. companies are scaling back investment plans at the fastest pace since the recession, signaling more trouble for the economic recovery. So again, the, uh, the, the misinformed are going to sit there and go, oh, yeah, OK, these people are just upset that uh, Obama won. No, they're not, folks. Businesses aren't charities, right? The Red Cross is a charity. A business is in business to make a profit. It's not a charity. So businesses, doesn't matter if Obama got reelected, his policies are going to be enacted. So businesses have to react to that. They're not in business just to uh, support folks. And here's a uh, very troubling uh, story from last week. And of course, it's uh, you know, tongue in cheek because it's you know, hostess and Twinkies, ding dongs, ho hos, all that type of stuff. Really unhealthy stuff that I grew up uh, eating with. Look at this. Here you go. Hostess union clings to hope. And to quote uh, Romney, hope's not a strategy. So the guy who runs the hostess union of 18,500 uh, workers is saying that he hopes. You ready? He hopes that a buyer will quickly swoop in to buy the profitable parts of the company. So I'm sure this guy along with just about every union hates Bain Capital, right? It hates those private equity firms. Guess who mo most likely would quote swoop in and buy profitable parts of the company? Private equity. So hate them, but now hope that they swoop in and take care of us. You really got to wake up, folks. Um, I read last night that uh, the international transportation workers or whoever it is out in the LAX, world's busiest airport, are planning a Thanksgiving Day strike. If I run the Los Angeles airport, I'd fire all of them and I'd hire people who are currently unemployed and really wanting to work. So stand by if you're traveling at all on Thanksgiving, uh, because you're probably going to have your travel plans disrupted by the union that runs um, out there at LAX. So investment falling off a cliff. Uh, unions hoping that private equity uh, sweeps in and picks them up. And then another good article in the journal today, Tech Sets Correction Course. So the market's down about 7%-ish uh, from its highs about six weeks ago. 10% is officially a correction, right? Uh, but tech is just leading the charge downhill. I've covered this in my live trade briefs about how technology, whether it's Apple, uh, Amazon, uh, Facebook, Google, it, it's becoming commoditized especially in the gadget wars, right? The mini, 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 mini iPad, the iPhone 12, whatever it's going to be, the Amazon this, that's ad supported. It's the airline industry, folks. It's a race to the bottom on pricing. They're going to try and bankrupt the other guy out of business uh, in a price war. That never works out well for anybody. Okay, so uh, tech not doing well, companies not doing well. That's going to hurt earnings. All these people being laid, laid off, folks, these 18,500 from Hostess, all these other scores of companies, weekly unemployment claims are going to go up. Unemployment is going to go up. So we're going to see north of 8% uh, unemployment. I think we're going to get back into the uh, mid-8s uh, for 2013. And just to give you a heads up, officially, I'm calling it, I think we're in a recession right now. A recession is always rearward guesstimate. What do I mean by that? Around Q2 of next year is when some brainiacs are going to come out and say, officially, we entered a recession in you know August of 2012. I think we're already in it, folks. Um, <clears throat> But let's get tactical for a, a second here. What's going on uh, this week? Uh, existing home sales in October are going to come out at, uh, at 10 a.m. And the National Association of Housing Builders, uh, their housing market index is going to come out here. Looking for a slight uptick in existing uh, home sales. But again, I quoted Bernanke earlier. And who cares if existing home sales, uh, you know, existing home sales going up uh, might be a good thing and it might be a bad thing. 
what are they priced at? So just because ex- existing home sales might rise, we have a, a whole slew of a shadow inventory that has come on the market um, and, and waiting to come on the market. And to, you know, people are sitting on their homes going, well, I'll just wait until the housing market gets better to move. Really? Uh, don't hold your breath. On um, Tuesday, uh, and today, uh, uh, we also have Urban Outfitters, Lowe's, uh, and Tyson Foods. Some, you know, some interesting Brahmers economy coming out with earnings. Housing starts for October on on uh, Tuesday is going to be interesting to, uh, to, uh, to watch. Also, building permits will be interesting to watch. Ben Bernanke is also uh, squawking at the Economic Club of New York, so we'll, we'll see what he has to say. Uh, Heinz, Campbell Soup, Best Buy, HP, Hewlett Packard are coming out with, uh, with earnings on Tuesday. Interesting to watch. Wednesday... Uh, we're going to see some interesting reports on weekly unemployment claims. Like I said, obviously last week, surprise after the election just exploded north of the 400,000 range to 439. We'll see. Uh, I think this is low with everything that's going on. I think we're going to see north of 400 uh, again. Manufacturing PMI, the all important University of Michigan consumer sentiment, uh, the conference board's leading index, and also inflation expectations. So big day on uh, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, obviously the market is closed because of Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoy Thanksgiving with your loved ones, your family, uh, your friends. But look at a slew of what's going on on Thursday. So watching the, uh, who's playing, Detroit or Cowboy? Um, no, Patriots. Uh, Thanksgiving. Watching those folks, I'm going to be working. French reports, German reports. So, you know, uh, uh, the bankers of Europe, so to speak, let's see what's going on in Germany, right? And then in the Eurozone as a whole. So Thursday is going to be a, a a slew of economic reports that could impact our markets on Friday. So make sure you uh, uh, be prepared because Friday might be a, a big up day or a big down day. And again, holiday shortened weeks, like I, uh, I covered in a trade alert this morning with uh, my readers at Top Gun Options, can be extremely volatile. It's low volume, so any big uh, any price move could be exaggerated. So. Friday, not too much going on except what? Black Friday and then online Monday or whatever, Cyber Monday, whatever the hell they call it. But obviously, Black Friday uh, starts on Friday and it's going to be uh, interesting. And then uh, it, it's a short week, right? So equity markets, fixed income markets close at, uh, at 1 p.m. Sunday, I don't think it's on here, but this will be interesting, folks, is on Sunday, regional elections are going to be held in that Spanish region of Catalonia, which... I think they're voting on whether or not to secede from Spain. Now, they've always been an independent region of Spain, but uh, they've more or less had it. They said, you know what? We've been financing the rest of this country, uh, and we're done with it. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if they actually, in fact, do that. Okay, a lot of good stuff going on in our WCI and uh, Top Gun Options model portfolios. Uh, some great bearish positions on Apple. We're probably going to, the futures are indicating up right now, but every day for the past about six weeks, the futures have just about indicated up, and they f- and they sell off and they fade. But again, any rally today, I'm selling into any rallies. Uh, I'm, I'm selling into in a bunch of our positions, uh, and just came out. With with a uh, trade alert a little while ago to our subscribers on uh, Chipotle. Nice weekly uh, iron condor on Chipotle. So, got to go. A uh, lot of trading to do today. A lot going on in the markets. A lot going on around the world. Obviously, um, keeping an eye on the Middle East. Have a lot of oil positions on as hedges. We have uh, double verticals, bullish double verticals on USO uh, on board, just in case uh, uh, the Middle East gets crazy. Well, a crazier, uh, and also keeping an eye on Europe. A lot of manu- uh, um, manufacturing and uh, economic reports coming out of the eurozone this week. Keeping an eye also on our banker uh, China and their change of command, and you know exactly what's going to be going on in China going forward. Uh, and then obviously operationally here in the United States, with companies just continuing to lay off, companies going to get skinny because of what's going to happen on uh, on January first, and small businesses folks are going to get destroyed, absolutely destroyed on January. First, so the whole, you know, uh, millionaires uh, who make two fifty or above uh, are going to get shellacked, and they're going to turn around and take it out on their businesses. And you might think that's evil, Gordon Gecko ish. It's not. Businesses are not charities; they're in business to make a profit. They have a fiduciary duty to their shareholders or to themselves, if they're, they're you know, sub chapter S corp, to their wife, to their kids, to make money. 
So it's going to get a lot more interesting, folks. The fiscal cliff, uh, we'll get a deal, like I said, in October. Sometime in October, we might get a relief rally. But just at the deal I'm looking at is a kick the can down the road. We might get a couple of the five or six huge things uh, figured out. Uh, but the rest, they're going to end up uh, fumbling it down the road like, uh, like our good leaders in D.C. Okay, so going to be a great week. Uh, happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow at Top Gun Options Situation Report. See ya.